All right. So, in the heading of day 14, there's just some of the critical links like build cheat sheets, completion spreadsheet, assembly version history, wall, wall modules, CAD, BOM template. Um, let's start with uh, with FreeCAD. <laughs> Get into uh, as we integrate, like when we do the FreeCAD discussion, let's talk about real design, such as stairway which comes from the seed home uh, I reorganized this so it's all on one page it's easier to find also in the completion spreadsheet I was reviewing the completion spreadsheet and we're pretty good uh, moving along I added second story platform and roof platform so we'll talk about second story platform and roof it relates to the stairs because we got to get from floor one to floor two stairs are relevant we can actually do a simple exercise in FreeCAD regarding stair design um, on the house design it's always about reconciling like the ultimate point of truth we're trying to get to is the CAD file when done in detail you can extract the bills of materials when you look at the physical reality you have to look at cut lists and what kind of materials are you actually getting because you can get materials that are pre-cut studs like we use others are full length uh, there's a variety of those so you, you have to be aware of what materials you're using also the inventory <coughs> from the CAD March, I think you're muted. Yow. Alright, yeah, indeed. Okay. Um, right, so uh, just in terms of the general design process CAD, BOM, cut list, cheat sheet, inventory, reconciliation. I mentioned before about CAD, BOM, and build instructions. They all have to agree, like, we're working from CAD. If you have the CAD, you can readily extract things like cheat sheets because you can add dimensions to parts. In physical reality, you have to pay attention to cut lists because some materials might be already in, in the size we need, like for example the pre-cut studs which we don't need to cut, or if we uh, buy longer material which we can, like we got a bunch of 10-footers that we have to pre-cut pre ourselves because it happened that the 10-footers were actually cheaper at the time than the 9-foot pre-cuts, or we had say a uh, inventory issue at the store where they didn't have something so you might get longer pieces you have to cut it to size but always you have to I would say uh, that's when when things start costing money when the CAD is not correct like you know, we're running into a few mistakes here on the CAD then you're you're spending money on a cut list so it's better to do everything in CAD and have the full BOM in CAD but all those should reconcile so the point is uh, as we go forward all those assets should be available and organized and how do we organize them we do have build cheat sheets uh, let's see just just talking a little bit about organization here what form are those cheat sheets in right now it's a separate doc and we've been uh, working on this kind of general template which was typically out of this sweet home 3d file for the final cheat sheet we probably want to go straight to the the drawing dimensioning workbench in FreeCAD because you can just label things pretty rapidly we can do these kinds of nice nice diagrams too I think it's a combination of both because if you want to put uh, annotations quality annotations then it is useful to have the Google Docs the slides we can copy and paste either from FreeCAD or Sweet Home but because FreeCAD has dimension capacity, it saves you time on making all these kinds of dimension, d dimensional arrows. It's so probably the preferred route would be dimensions from FreeCAD and then further annotations in the docs. It's probably a good way to go. If you're generating professional design drawings, then the open source software that exists for that would be vector graphics such as Inkscape and the FreeCAD people, some of the architects in that group, they do use Inkscape to make your title blocks, your 
templates for what you submit to the building department so there's a tool chain there that's available for that on a completion spreadsheet I think this is relatively good to to keep track like this uh, I think this works especially we can cross-reference to the actual picture of what's going on I'm wondering yeah th those pictures are appearing there that's good so you can reference everything from this spreadsheet we're seeing that there's only a few that are not done and that is good but we can continue at the atomic level Th this like has one by one but we can continue that like for example the other day we started on a the ceiling the second floor plat second floor platform joists and things like that we can keep track of that in here too because we actually started that but actually never completed it so it's something we can actually atomize and attach names to but let's go to um let's cover a few things so stairs second floor platform and the roof platform the roof and second story platform are pretty much the same they're 2 by 12 joists with a 16 foot span so uh, very similar except we have a cutout for the the stairway and the second floor platform beyond that the concept is the same you've got a span of 16 and you've got the joist members every two feet and you've got plywood of some sort on top of that to bond everything together so it's rather simple but we, we're putting on the blocks on the end of the joists and on the rim, so-called rim joists the ones on the long side um, if you click on that we went through some of these details here we are making these these rim joists here with blocking as indicated here that's what we have been doing so that you pre-mark the so this is your detail of the blocking what we do is attach so there's details procedures but over this entire platform we attach blocking to the long 16 foot there's two 16 foot sections we attach the blocking to it to mark the location so that when we when we build this we're already located we don't have to do any measuring we put them in one after another and it should go really quickly like if we put up, up the sides you know to put in the entire platform on the floor you know that's as quickly as you can put put the joists up there on on ladders or or scaffolding so the idea here was we're doing this kind of blocking the same kind of blocking for location location markers uh, we put this kind of blocking all the way down uh, we have some videos of that happening uh, but yeah this blocking goes on onto every the small block onto every joist location okay uh, roof is pretty much the same Let, but let's take a look at real quick what the roof looks like uh, it's there's more layers there there's insulation in the roof so there's more layers we start so the rafters is what we know from the second story platform insulation goes into that but we need more insulation actually because in order for condensation not to occur um, it won't suffice to just have the fiber insulation we need actually much more so rigid insulation like two more two more layers of two inches is actually required to make this work so the thermal difference between the inside of the house and the outside never gets to the point that you're condensing water because otherwise all that water would go into the fiberglass insulation and would just make your insulation ineffective so the requirement there is like R40 or so the the fiber insulation that's going to be 12 inches deep already that's for the height of the rafters or joists they're called rafters on a roof so that's 12 inches plus 4 inches two layers of 2 inch on top of that which is quite a bit and then the plywood the OSB on top on top of that then the rubber the EPDM rubber roof there's some details of how you attach it with a termination bar on the edges you're not poking anything through the top there would be holes that 
could get water in so you making an attachment on the side of the house and there's this at the bottom there is a roof slant spacer and then there's a ceiling under the roof the second floor is going to have a ceiling of the same beadboard as is on the walls but the roof slant spacer instead of cutting all the joists to a slight angle of four inches over 16 feet we're just making a roof slant spacer which is a two by four with with an additional half inch to make four inches and we put that on the back side of the house so that the the roof slants very very slightly it's there's no such thing as a flat roof there flat roofs are very slightly sloped in all cases because you want water to come off of that we can build this i.e. make the blocking and cut the roof rafters to size because these roof rafters how long are they going to be if our house is 16 feet what's the answer to that one how long are the roof rafters if you look at the geometry of what we show in this diagram it's going to be flat and it's going to go straight up the, the end joists or rim joists are equal with the side of the house Uh, just the length of the rafter. That's, that sounds pretty. Uh, pretty common. Minus. Well, uh, minus something. Uh, three minus what? Minus three, three inches. It's sixteen feet minus three, three inches, because you got the. The edge, the edges, sides. Uh, they go direct. So you got sixteen, sixteen across, but if you have the wood, the two by twelves, on the edge you gotta cut off the roof rafters by three inches so we have to do that these roof rafters are in all covered up they're not stained or anything the roof rafters actually are the ones that are stained because they're exposed underneath the, the second story platform that's basically it's a very basic design what we did here is do do the spacer the roof slant spacer otherwise you're cutting uh, the 16 joists at a slight angle and uh, then you'd have to cut all of the um, I think you'd have to cut the way they do it normally I think they some people use slanted insulation you can actually get insulation that's tapered but it's a specialty item it's not you can't get it at the big box store so an easy way to do this is just okay you gotta you continue to the rectangles continue with that squares are easy slants are a little like angled things you got to do cutting for that so just put this spacer the roof slant spacer here so that we address that issue let's go into FreeCAD let's do let's look at stair designs um, so let's look at the stair design guide this is this is what we need to know to design stairs and we can actually start catting them up so let's do a simple exercise it's simple enough you gotta have 10 foot treads after the nosing you gotta have a height of seven and three quarters um, nosing less stairs are more dangerous because you tend to you tend to stub your toes if you walk up them so nosing is a good idea on stairs we're using nosing the stuff that comes off the stair. Nosing. Look at the diagram. Does it say that? Nosing. Right there. It's not required, but it is important for safety and ergonomics. You can click on that link to find out more about it. Uh, just think about it. If Think about it, right? Mm -hmm. If you're walking up a set, set of stairs, if the nosing weren't there, you might hit your toe against the stair the the vertical part um, it kind of makes it easier to walk up the way that the human body works um, there's certainly stairs that look like the the nosing less stairs but let's think about ergonomics and safety because the nosing makes a stair more safe now it's important that all your stairs be the same height. That's a safety issue. If you're like, if you have stairs and they're uneven, you're gonna trip and fall. 
like because you don't know like oh where's the next step that's just uh, so so they regulate stairs quite a bit and they give you particular dimensions so the step size is not too high and and such so uh, getting back from there there's a few things we know we know that we have this hole here for the stairs and let's jump to the CAD file so using the concept of positionally locating things let's let's open up this um, file stair design exercise go to that slide two um, extracted stairs that's also sweet home stair design guide is there what you need what you, we're missing there is the file so let's do the the practice file and where do you find that on my log of course so you can download the file there so stairs um, I'll paste that right in there so free CAD file let's practice there uh, so download that and let's actually just take a look at that what I did there So drawing out from the diagram, I, I looked at this, uh, I'm reverse engineering stairs from the design guide. So I took a look at the design guide, I just used the dimensions they have while using stock lumber. Now, um, the only trick is the, the design difference we are making, which is important for ease of build. So boot up FreeCAD, but for ease of build, you either have the stringers, the the notched pattern that goes up, made out of like a two by twelve by sixteen that you cut out. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna go simpler. So let's cut it out. Let's start at the stairs file. So can pe uh, people see my screen? Okay. So what do we got there? Um, and let's tag team it. So I'll, I'll ask the next person to do the next thing. So I drew a tread. Um, now, what is this tread? You see it's staggered. It's two 2 by 12s standard size. And what's the width here? What's the width of our opening? So now if we extrude it, okay, so the first person, let's make believe this is correct. I'll just explain. There's two treads, <coughs> and there's a reason for them being staggered. There's nosing there. And we're doing... Um, no, that, that fails, doesn't it? We don't have the nosing requirement, do we? So I want the next person to correct the nosing requirement. So how about who wants to do that and share your screen? What's wrong with the nosing? You tell me. Look at the design guide and see what the design guide requires and see what we have in the CAD. And then it allows you to determine, well, how do you identify the nosing? How do you identify the vertical part? Um, so let's just draw the treads with the proper rise. Let's not worry about the the stringers, the the long notched out pieces, which are hard to make because you have to measure every single one. Basically, the stair shape, the long stringer that that's called the stringer. That part is hard to build. Precise, you got to be pretty precise. If you don't get all three stringers, which the treads lie on, your stairs are going to squeak and they're going to be uneven. So, one big issue about stringers is also s squeakiness. Str <laughs> from experience, our house is very, the, when you walk up the stairs, it's loud and squeaky. Um, because the stringers tend to bend, unless they're fully supported, they tend to squeak on you. And the treads ten tend to squeak on you. So what we're doing here is doubling up the treads to make a, effectively a four by. So two two by twelves make effectively a four by. Okay, um, so somebody tell me what's wrong with our diagram with our free cat. What's the dimensions of interest that we're failing at? Does anyone see it? I can't get to the cat file. How come? Um, I believe it is hidden behind the <coughs> on my computer. Um, Say what? So the free cat file, when you click on the file from that is this stairs. Uh, click on a file. What happens when you click on a file in blue? underlying part 
Uh, oh yeah, that's what I can't click. Um, How come? Can does anyone else have an issue? The picture was in the way. The picture's in the way, so I can't. Because yeah, if the link is underneath that picture, that's there. I don't know. Oh, oh, I don't know what's happening there. I can, but I I noticed the doc is not shared. So, so let's. The link is underneath. Okay, try it now. Um, I updated permission, so maybe refresh. Um, is that working now? Still have to move it, but now. Now I can. All right. Get to it. So let's shrink up that picture a little bit. And that's from the conceptual Sweet Home 3D file. If you want to download the concept in Sweet Home 3D, um, you can actually look at those stairs. And that's right. W the way we had it there were stringers, but since that's a concept file, we we can redo that. Okay. So did everyone download the file? Who wants to do that? Uh, look at the file and share your screen. How about prints? Uh, share your screen and and navigate the FreeCAD file. So what do we got there? What can we see? What's up about it? Yeah. So, what's the nosing requirement from the design file, from the design nosing. concept? Nosing is a minimum of 0.75, right? Three yeah. So, do we have three, four, three fourths there? No. No, it's it's shorter. There's a piece of wood that's hiding the innards of what's under the under the tread. So basically like the front cover, so you don't like, I think that's a good thing for safety so that if you step too deep onto this, into the stair, you hit against that so you don't trip. Like don't trip when you put your foot up. But anyway, like these stairs will be closed up if you're looking at them from the front. This is the first tread going up as you go on up to the left. But yeah, that nosing is too short, so what do we do? We gotta slip out the top, uh, why don't you do this? Why don't you take the... Sorry, are you sharing your screen? Yeah, I'm on a free tab. Alright, Okay, there you go. Uh, take the upper tread and move it over. So how do you do that? How do you select a, a thing? How do you select a... Yeah, so now you can probably grab one corner. Grab a corner and try to move it. No, it's not going to let you do it. Why? Because it's already constrained. It's green. So we, we need to remove something here. Like remove the remove the 0.75 at the bottom because I think that's what's constraining it. See the 0.75 on the bottom right? Yes, Click on 0.75 and erase it. Or actually double click it and change it to like 1. 1 point change it to 1.375 but that was that was within the bounds right that was the minimum well 0.75 is the minimum yeah. well but look at that the, there's that board that makes it shorter then right there's the board in front you see what I'm saying we, we, we have the stairs you're going uh, up the stairs that's the board <laughs> there right so it's kind of when you look at the diagram it's Actually, a little trick. Okay, 1.37. Great. Okay, that's a code legal stair right there. Now let's go to the second one. Uh, so thank you, Prince. Save it and upload it, uh, and we can re-download it. So let's now draw the second set of treads. So how do we locate the second set of treads in terms of height, given that we know okay, this is the first primitive element. It's a repeating pattern. So you might as well use what you already have. So why don't we, for example, copy the vertical part and copy it over into that notch so that you know how much it has to rise, right? Let's try that and see if that suffices. Maybe it doesn't. Um, but let, right? So you want to use what you already have when you're building something as a measuring stick for the next thing 
it's an effective way so you can actually locate things exactly because you know what pieces you're already using it's a good way to des to go about design does that make sense we use uh, zoom instead of Oh, I see. Interesting. I see. Um, okay, so who can who wants to do the next one? Um, okay, so Paul, take the file that prints uploaded, downloaded, and now draw the first vert the next vertical vertical rise. So one sketch so you can actually move parts of that sketch yeah actually you know what we want to do yeah can I make a, maybe make a new one an object yeah like right now what what actually would be useful is to extrude it to the correct height maybe, maybe let's do that so we let's 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 give you a different because yeah let's extrude these to the first 3d object uh, now the question becomes how wide is that how do we know that part um, and for that, I actually, since there's a few pieces of info, download this next file to get oriented. Because now we're fitting this into the house, which has got the walls, then there's siding on the walls, so we got to get all those dimensions out. And um, for which reason, I, I uh, have a, this next file, which is um, it's called landing on my log. My log so I'll, I'll paste this into. go to my log it's it's a landing file so download the landing file I also pasted that into discord apprenticeship yeah just download the latest one but it gives gives you what do we need here we want to look at <coughs> the the base of the whole house and then the hole for the staircase which should all be in there. So if you open that landing up. Okay, so there it is. What what is there? There's the exterior sketch, which is thirty two by sixteen, and it also has the contour for the wall thickness. Uh, there's a landing there which is if you look at the sweet home picture there's a landing just a raised platform what we're, we care about right now uh, is actually if you look at the second story platform if you turn that on and you're looking from directly from the top you're gonna get insight into what that stair dimension is actually and I noticed that one part there is out too far <coughs> Uh, but basically, the stair width is going to be from under the the stairway hole to the wall. So we have to take that measurement. Now, mm. stairway wall to the hall. Yeah. So, okay. Let me let me share my screen and and discuss that a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm I am sharing my screen here, but okay. So if you look at so this is the basically what we have here. We drew the the bottom and we drew the first floor platform which comes out of our assembly file. 
Only thing I don't like about this thing is if you notice there, is there an issue with this? Yeah, that thing is, this thing should be right below the wall. It's out one and a half inches, so let me just see if I could um, correct that by cutting it out and uh, moving it over. It's, it's one object, so I can't really do much there. So second store story platform I'm gonna click on that I'm gonna try to cut it out by putting a sketch on its face um, see if that works and then just draw another one over that can I pocket that out no no the way it the way some of these objects work I can't cut that out right now um, okay but what's the stair width? The stair width is going to be between the wall and the first layer of plywood. So it's it's literally that 48 inches minus the wall thickness, which is 5.5. However, there's a detail that there's interior sheathing, which is another 3 eighths of an inch. So the answer is, I'm going to write that down. For stairway, I'm going to go to document that. But the idea is the stairway distance, and you can see from the, the Sweet Home image, you see the stairs go to the wall. The wall is cut out in that image there, just for reference. Um, but stair width equals, so it's going to be 48 for the hole that's um, basically the width of the sheet of plywood if you look at the the free CAD minus the 5.5 for the wall and then minus 0 0.375 because we have sheeting on the internal walls so the stairway is going to go to the sheeting not against the frame so because uh, because it's useful to put in the stairs after you have the sheeting in otherwise you would have to be cutting all around the stairs for your sheeting which is really difficult so you do the sheeting first, and hence your dimension is 48 minus 5.5 minus 0.375. So that's the stair width. And that's what we can pad out. So I measured 48.82 inches then from the wall to the stair opening? Uh, I think right now we're ex we wanted to extrude those sketches. Oh yeah, no, but... Yeah, so 48 minus 5.5, uh, you can do the measurement or you can do no. calculator, minus 0 0.375, calculator tells me 42.125. I got something slightly smaller by measuring. <laughs> and so let's see, let's look at your screen and let's reconcile that with the CAD. Okay, so let's see. Let's see where you're measuring. Okay, so we just um, yeah, I was trying to say that 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 beam there is wrong. It has to be above the wall. It has to be up by 1.5 inches. So it's really that white line that you're measuring to. The white line is the wall. So measure to the white line instead. Now the white line is to the wall, but we didn't draw the sheeting on it. So you have to draw like 0.375 away from the white line. Yeah, that white line. Yep, that's the that's the profile of the base with the outer walls sketch uh, frame of the outer walls. So that's 5.5 from the the edge. Uh, I'm gonna correct the other file in the meantime. Well, go ahead. Sorry, that's that's a mistake there. That's uh, so yeah that that horizontal piece there that should be up 1.5 inches to the white line. Okay. And then so you I got... Do I add subtract sheeting? Yeah. Okay. Subtract from that. So 3 eighths. Yep. So about 42 inches. Yeah. <clears throat> the specific calculator value I got was 42.125. Sure. 
so that's the extrusion of the stair profile and that's pretty easy that's good uh, now how, how who can tell me how we're gonna build this if you think about this um, because we want to consider things like okay easy to build so we start with 2 by 12s which we don't have to cut like to dimension they're already that we just cut them to length on a cutoff so that's very easy to fabricate but you gotta put those two pieces together so you just screw them together uh, how do you screw them together would you do that would you prepare this beforehand or you, yeah you wanna we do want to modularly beforehand screw from the bottom so you don't see the screw holes um, let's and let's let's just discuss the the one piece the vertical like is that something we're just gonna have to cut or maybe there's some uh, piece that's already around that size well to get that that max stair height I think I don't know the answer to this but but the the consideration here is that we have to have enough space going up vertically so that like if you have the steps smaller the stairs would have to be longer the higher they are the shorter the faster you're going up we have the constraint of the 10 foot aperture for the stairway hole that's that's what we have so uh, if that piece that right there is what that's 6.25 well it's kind of close to 5.5 uh, if I could, I might want to make that 5.5 so we can just use things like the three-quarter inch trim boards. They will also expand the length of your stairs. Convenient there is same like thin plywood, like three-eighths inch, and we probably just have to cut that to size. I'm, ju I'm just considering like every step of the design, like okay, where can we not cut things so we don't have to? Because then you're gonna have to cut all these tread pe the what do you call those pieces? Do they have a name? Um, let's see, in our design guide, was there any name attached to those? Um, I don't know what they're called. So anyway, that's good. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I, I don't think we... We're designing for the 7.25 maximum rise. In other words, we want to get to the top as soon as possible. But we may find out that we might have to change this if it doesn't end up exactly at the end of the hole. So right now, um, this is parametrics come in very handy. We definitely want to use the 2 by 12s because we don't want to be cutting that kind of stuff. So the question is, at the end of the day, we might have to modify the height of the the riser, that that one, yeah. Um, so where are we going to put that one? I'd say... So you can drag drag that. You can drag the sketch if you control C. Like once you copy it, you can drag it. Yeah, I need to. I want to extrude it and actually close the space. But I can just copy it. So. You want to go double click on a sketch and drag a corner, or double click on a sketch. Okay, and that's a separate sketch now. Because if it was the same sketch, you can click on the one corner of that and, and the corner of the tread and make the point constraint where they that would jump to that corner where you need it. Uh, sure. If you have it in a separate, you can move it over. The reason why I created a separate was uh, I think the intersecting faces was preventing me from extruding it, so I don't know what to do with that. Um, Okay, I see, I see. In order to extrude it, yeah, those faces cannot be touched. Like we have the common line, that that's a violation of rules. You just have to have a contour. So yeah, we can't really do that. We'd have to, actually let's learn that. Let's learn how to do that because 
that will be very useful. So maybe next, go to the next person. Um, so we're trying to. Yeah, we can leave that sketch. Let's move on to the next person. Let's let's have let's now clean up the first sketch so we can actually extrude it uh, while saving it. So Paul, why don't you save that and we'll move on to the next person. Okay. Well, I didn't actually make any changes. So. You put that one vertical one there, uh, uh, so you sure. did. Leave it, and then we'll move it. We'll move that as, as the next exercise. Sure. So we'll extrude first and then start the second tread. Yeah, we can, we can do that. Because actually this, this one tread unit that we have right now could be the unit that we repeat multiple times to get to the top of the stairs. So let's do that. Um, So are we going to reduce the length of the, the rising part from 6.25 to like 5.5 or something? We don't know yet, but if we put it all in the same sketch, we can have set an equal constraint. So if we change the one at the end to make it fit, it would all change at the same time. But uh, don't we need to design it out of uh, materials? We said we can cut that because we're very likely not to get the exact it's very unlikely that using like a 5.5 standard width you get to the exact same place it's just highly unlikely but we would if we could um, okay so next person wants to take that um, and okay could more. yeah the question is how to design like parametrically would be the ideal thing you would just like make one sketch and you just create certain key dimensions and that's that could be like the next step. Let's let's see how um, how the stairs are structured so we know exactly how they are. Um, because if we just do the parametric thing, we might miss some of the things like it's actually not buildable because it's made of pieces that are just hard to put together. Okay, uh, so let's just continue there. Okay, so double click on a first sketch, which is the test tread. Okay, so now we're going to make it extrudable. So what do you make? You cannot have two common lines right. whenever you're extruding. So what are you going to do? Um, Why don't you click on that line and just erase it? That's all you can do. So click on that line, erase it. Okay, well now you have a gap at the left side, so you have to connect those two points. Right, and also so that one, also there you've got, so that line you've got to get rid of. And you can you only only thing you can do is you can connect after you remove the lines connect the breaks that you made. So you've got the one selected. Click delete on your keyboard. And then just connect this. And then we have to delete. Yeah, you'll have to delete delete that one as well that you're clicking. So delete that one. And now you just have to manually redraw lines between the points. And then, yeah, so then you have to connect them, but make sure that the 3 8 inch constraint that was there, you eliminated it, so you'll have to put it in back later. So let's have you draw all the lines so that's what you do, erase that one and then reconnect go reconnect okay and are those without even looking at it you can just select both and then click on a point constraint yeah and we see that there, there might be some discrepancies like your line is not straight or whatever but let's fix that as the next step so right now we're just getting the general shape to show that we can actually extrude this now. So go to the, la fix the last corner. Last, uh, the, the one on the left. Uh, and now you click extrude. And if you can't extrude, then we gotta, then some points are broken. So, so see if you can extrude. After, Park. 
So clo close out of that, select it and, and extrude it. It's part design. So go to part design. Can you extrude that? No, nothing happened there, right? So I don't think it's happening. I would make sure you need to like 42.125. Okay. No, so, so, so the next step is um, zoom in on each corner and see where you've got a broken line. So it's double. Here, yeah, so, okay, that's one. So. so you got to double click on a sketch. So first, make sure it's selected. Mean, means it's it's not selected yet. How do you know it's selected? It's, uh, it's not that one, but it's inside the pad. Okay, so remove the pad, delete the pad. Double click on a the sketch. There. So yeah. So make those two points coincident. You can. Click on one point and another, that doesn't join them. You have to yeah. click on a constraint. So, there. And I don't know if you have any other broken points, but generally, like what I would do is just select each corner, make it a point, select each corner, do that for every corner. Um, yeah, like there, for example. Once again, just reconnect them with a point constraint, coincident point constraint. That one should be good because we didn't touch that. That side, it's likely to get broken wherever you erase the lines, but where you didn't touch them. How about that point there? This one. To the right? That one, I think. This is the one I constrained. Okay. All right, so see if you can extrude it now. What happens if you click extrude the, okay, delete the pad first though. Delete that pad, because um, I think it's stuck on the pad. Click, right. click delete on that. Well, and we'll, yeah, it will keep the sketch. Okay. It deletes the pad. <coughs> uh, still didn't. I tried to, do, I tried to. Uh, do that again. Uh, what happens if you click delete on your keyboard? It's the same thing. That's weird. It's just the menu. Okay, there. Uh, now it did it. Anytime a dialog's open, I think that just freezes any file changes. So okay. Try again. Okay, so once again, it didn't work because as soon as you click pad, it should pad it out before you put in the values. So you have to explore, you have to zo zoom in on a corner. And if you don't know which one it is, basically do a box over the corner and click point, and you have to repeat that for every point. I'm not sure if you select, so select it by selecting, draw a box and drag it over the corner. So you capture both points. Otherwise, you have to zoom in infinitely to see whether they're, whether they're broken. So draw a box like a selection box within the graphics program. You know how you select, like say in the screen capture, you select, select a box. FreeCAD works like that too. Um, click on, click and drag, yeah, like that. So you selected two by doing that. Now click the coincident constraint. Okay, so that's fixed. Just fix, just go through fixing. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can't tell. It's it's a detail thing. Yeah, so you can do that. Right. So the useful thing to do there is when you're drawing the new lines, make them coincident at that point. So once you drew the line, you, you also know it's coincident. Yeah, do we co cover all the points? So you got that first point? Okay, that should be... That should be... 
And that should be it. So, so now, 11 degrees to 7 degrees of freedom. Oh, look at that. And I think it drew that little check mark on it to let you know that it's actually legit. You see in the oh, yeah. part tree? Right here. So it's yeah. Small, yeah. Yeah. So click on that now, and I should be able to pat it out. Um, first, you got to close out of the sketch and just select in a part tree. There you go. So now select it to the right distance. And what was that distance? 42.125. Yeah. So that's that next person. So upload that. So what would be the best way to draw the next one? I would say copy the sketch from, well, we, we need to actually make, clean up everything because we didn't do the correct, set the constraints like 0.375 and stuff like that. So let's set the constraints because when we move when we created this manual modification, we probably changed lengths a little bit. So let's just correct that all. It's minor changes, but let's just correct it. So how do we correct it? Who wants to do that? Um, next person. So download it. Wes, you want to do that? So this, once again, we go back to the things that we know we have there. So make sure, so constrain like 0 0.375 for the, the thickness of the plywood. And make sure like the steps there, are that's 1.5 for the thickness of the two bys. And that way we know we're, we're going up accurately. I'm not seeing Wes. Really? Yeah, I'm not seeing Wes. Yeah, it's, it's like a it's thing on my screen. So like yeah, maybe use, let's maybe migrate back to okay. later. Uh, we'll try stopping the stream and restarting it, maybe at a lower bit rate. Oh, they're seeing, they're seeing it. Okay, so just constrain. So go back to the sketches. Yeah, and it's useful to maybe hide. You can click space on the image so that you hide it, the actual 3D object. So you can you can keep the sketches visible while hiding the. So click on that. Yeah, do that so it's easier to see. And then what what are the things we gotta know here? That's 1.5 there. Uh, so maybe do that. Well, that's already constrained on the back there. That's 1.5. Do the bottom one maybe for 1.5. Make sure it's still 1.5. Uh, the bottom one should also be 11.25 for the bottom tread because that, that length might have yes. changed. No, the one to the left of it. The horizontal, that needs to be 11.25. So yeah, that change is just minor. And then put in 0.375 for the plywood. Oh wait, and what happened to the nosing? I guess we didn't, there's something that happened there, but we didn't, that didn't get extended. We need to modify that part. The nosing needs to come out too. 
so that one is 0.375 And now the we can constrain. We know 7.25 is the overall height, so we can select the overall height to be 7.25. Is it conflicting? Yeah, the constraints are conflicting. Uh, therefore, uh, what I see happening there. Take a look at. You see that the yeah. I, I'm not sure what's what's happening. So. You cannot se select 0.375 for that, or did you do it? Yeah, it doesn't update the constraint. Therefore, we probably have something else that's in the way of that. Yeah. And what is it right now? 0.354. Okay, so erase it. Erase that for now. And then, if you yeah, zoom out, um, what is making it wrong? Well, this is 11.5. It should be. 11 it should be. A, the top tread and the bottom tread are 11.25, so that both of those must be 11.25. And then what about the step there? That is your nosing distance of 0.75. No, more than. It would be 0.75 plus 0.375. Um, okay, so what you can do take any x direction so how about you take that point rightmost point and then where the next closest point which should be 0.75 and that would be that corner um, okay so you see uh, if you look at my screen this corner if you take this corner uh, take a look at my screen. This corner and that corner should be 0.75, right? In the x direction. So select the constraint between those two points as 0.75. Wait, wait, sorry, sorry. Which corner is? Okay. If you're looking, if I'm looking at your screen, I need to look at your graph out because I was pointing to your screen. Let's see, can I do that? Uh, or I'll just. Okay, I'm gonna download and open the current. Yeah, I, I see it's kind of what you're saying. They're beneath the first thread, there are two sides. There are yeah. two sides which would both be 0.75 or more. So 0.75, if you want to look at my screen, I'm saying between. Take a look at my screen because we know okay we got to define the the nosing as 0.75 so I would take this point and this point the x separation between the, those two sorry sorry I'm, I'm talking no, no, I'm getting confused this and that point that that's gotta be 0.75 those two points right because the nosings just gotta stick out there now, if it doesn't allow you to do that, we must erase something else. Did that allow you to? Okay. This constraint. Get rid of that one. Yeah, get yeah, get rid of that one because that might block you up. Well, the one that's the horizontal one next to that one, the short horizontal there on the back of the stairs. Let's call the front of the stairs like as you're walking up. The back of the stairs, the horizontal. <coughs> not the vertical but the horizontal constraint you want to remove that in order to be able to manipulate your nosing distance does that make sense so whenever we put a constraint we, we want to remove another constraint that might be in conflict yes remove that one now change the nosing distance to 0.75 so double click on the red Number. Well, so it won't. It will not update. Okay. So tell you what. Why don't we erase all the constraints and then it will definitely update? Because I don't know what's confusing it right now. Just erase all of them.
Uh, if you get in trouble like that, sometimes it just might be hard. Like, okay, what's locking it up? Does it let you change it now? Because we know that we have one constraint, which is the, I think the origin is constrained, I believe. But, okay, now try, try to make that to 0.75 for the nosing. Yeah. 0 0.75. No? So I guess we'd, we'd want to go... Uh, if I get in trouble like that, what I would do is... Wh what are all those things on the back side where there's some constraints there? Uh, uh, what, what, okay, what you can do, it's select all... The cons the, uh, constraints. Okay, so get rid of those things. Uh, well, no, we, we can't. We can't really get rid of those things because well, they got to be coincident. Um, I see on the back of the stairs you've got some extraneous constraints there that might be locking it up. What, what are those things? Oh, equals. No, get get rid of those. What are those? I can't read that. Yeah. Equals. Yeah. Equality. I mean, they just they they kind of make sense, but. They do. I think what would block it is the consignment. Oh, okay, okay. So probably that point coincident with the origin. So m see if you can erase. Yeah, I'm getting a little confused on that here myself. Um, yeah. If you, but then when you remove all those coincident things, then you might not be able to extrude it. But check out what happens now if you do 0.75. Tell you what, what uh, since it's getting complicated, you can control all on all the constraints and hit the delete key, and you'll have no constraints, and then you can definitely move it. And if not, it's a bug. Okay, so now, now constraint to whatever you want. We've got a bug happening. Looks like. Yeah. Hmm. So it's not lacking something. Uh, what about the extraneous feature that's on the within the other that's in the same sketch? Is that the same sketch or that's a separate sketch of thing that Paul drew? I don't know. Um, okay. I don't know. Maybe a bug. Uh, but typically, it typically uh, tends to work. Yeah. Maybe move on. Or what are you trying to do? Just redo it, download yeah, it again? Yeah, just reopen pre-cat and see if it will work in 16. So I'll move it to stair vertical. I don't think that would affect it. Uh, it might be, you know what might be happening? If delete the pad and it will extract the sketch from underneath, that might be locking it up. So now, now try to add it. Try to edit that. Yeah, so it might be the other side. Um, once again, on the other side, that those constraints there. There is nothing that, there that really. That top constraint constrains the length, right? So that the oh yeah, of that top of right, right. So yeah, you got to get rid of the top. Yeah, how about now? All right. Well, that worked, but I'm you gotta. Uh, to do <laughs> you know, I think what it is is I have to type in zero point. Oh yeah, you gotta do zero point. You can't do point seven five. Oh, I I missed that. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, okay. So yeah, that's actually a. Uh, we should write that down because that confuses people quite a bit. Um, okay, so you got the nosing good there. Now reset all the dimensions. Make sure you 1.5 on the on the heights and 11.25 on on the lengths. There. We do that again. Um, 
Yeah, typically the Skecher is very robust. I mean, Skecher is pretty powerful. Freak has got a powerful Skecher. So, I haven't seen many bugs in it. Okay, uh, how about the 3 a, 3 a, or 0.375 for the, the plywood at the bottom there? The thickness. And now take the overall height of the stairs, so the bottom point and the top point, make that 7.25. So take one bottom point. And you can only con constrain between point distances. So select one point on bottom and top. That and help music con conflicting constraints. Uh, it, yeah. When I try to set this to 0.375, there's a conflicting constraint somewhere. Those two, you're in between the other two that are constrained. Just that. Like the oh. that one's constrained and then the other one next to it's constrained. So mm. Well, yeah. We might need to, like, tell you what, do this, do this part. I, it seems like s some of these are not horizontal vertical, so set the horizontal and vertical constraints. Because that might be thrown off. I think that left part, if I'm seeing it correctly, left part of your plywood, the 3.375 is not vertical. So make that vertical. Yeah, so little details like if you change things manually, like you, you'll make little motions happen. So you got to correct all of that if you're getting a detailed drawing. So did the point three seven five end up? Is that going forward yet or no? Well, I'll add a vertical constraint, and then the length of this. I'm not sure what the length. If you're not sure, just leave it because we want to constrain. The most important thing that will come out in a wash if you select the distance between the bottom point and top point as 7.25, which is the max allowable code height of stairs. So that's the most important figure of merit here. Do the okay, so check that you have seven seven point two five or constrain that one. I would remove that like the the plywood constraint and replace that with seven point two five but going all the way to the top. To here? Yeah. But the corner point there. So you need to select you can't select lines, you gotta select corners. Select points. So select one point, and then upper left, upper right point. In fact, upper right or left, because that will still get you, yeah, so 7.25. OK. So that's what happened there. So make that one now horizontal, the one that curved up. So one at a time. You got two at a time. Click elsewhere to select out of those two and click on the, yep, make that horizontal. So I would, let's see, so you got the 7.25, yeah, mm hmm. And the one that you, the 6. Point something, and I see that that's, so now, you need to make the right part of the top tread 1.5 because you shrunk it to 6 to uh, 1. So that means you got to get rid of that that other constraint there, the one that's less than 7.25. You got to get rid of the 6.25. Yeah. So now make that thing 1.5. Okay, that one is still 0 0.75. The vertical one is going to be 1.5. Mm -hmm. That's your tread. Oh, okay, so you got to erase. Okay, so maybe redraw that. And when you draw it, draw any line and then just make them coincident. So, so select over the area of that. Oh man, what are you doing there? <laughs> How do you do that? I didn't even know that was possible. <laughs> 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 yeah, okay. 
okay. Yeah, just draw a line between the two and then select an area by drag like you're selecting graphics in the graphics doc, like in Google Docs. When you're selecting an area, just drag your box to select the two points and then Yeah, so select the vertical and turn it to 1.5. And make that 1.5. And then make that one horizontal. <coughs> yeah, and that will automatically constrain the rise of that whatever that's there. And you'll read that as a dimension. You're not setting it. You want to set 7.25, you want to set 11.25. You want to set 1.5, but those those are really the only things you need to set outside of the 0 0.375. Yeah, That's good. So now see if you can extrude that. Redundant. You got redundant constraints. Um, <clears throat> yeah, should be able to. Yeah, uh, you probably can. So single click to extrude. That's one degree of freedom. Mm -hmm. I don't think it will let me extrude until it has all the exploit constraints. It does, uh, even if you're not. <coughs> uh, try clicking on a pad. Yeah, it'll still allow you. All right, great. So, okay, save it and move on. So that's the actual, that's how it looks. Um, save it and upload it. <coughs> now, in what we're doing right now, we're not drawing the individual parts, so we wouldn't be able to use this for a bill of materials, but we are getting the correct geometry. So that's the first thing, because we got to figure out what that rise has to be exactly for a technically correct stair that gets us all the way up to the stairs. Um, so Odundo, why don't you take it from here. So how would we go from here if we want to if you want to do this effectively? Well, first step could be uh, we're going to have 15 treads, so it's a little bit of work, but why don't we try... Next step is important, like first step, step two. After we figure out first step and second step, then we can go like the whole thing. Let's figure out the first two steps. So uh, what would you do from here? Say you've got this tread pattern. We know that's good. It's got the right rise and everything else. How would we go about this to solve this? Oh, copy it. Copy which part? The three D or uh, yeah, the clone the Okay. Yeah, that's one way to do it. That's a that's a good way to do it. You can also copy the sketch, but yeah, the the whole part copying the whole part that's easy. Yeah. Hmm. Do that. Um Okay, so it's been uploaded. You can download it now. And Coder Jeff, I mean, you can probably get us a pattern of this uh, parametrized thing. <laughs> if you, I see you're, you're here. You can probably take... Now we have a correct tread, but we may have to change the, the rise depending on 
getting exactly up the stairs where once we hit the stairs upstairs um, we can end up so there's the joist there's when we get to the top of the stairs and the joists are 11.25 so if we hit a little bit up to the joist we can make the joist the last step uh, if that makes sense there's a joist at the end that we can hit we can either go all the way to the top or like hit 7.25 and then we still have like four inches to grab onto so make the joist the last step saves us a step uh, that's how you'd want to do it So you go to draft. Yeah. Um, yep. I'm trying to change. For some reason, it's not letting me change the position. Because you need to make a copy first. Uh, you would need to clone it in order to. Let me just delete this. One. but you can also move the corner and snap it to the upper left hand corner as well so you can either drag it or clone it when you drag it and copy just hit the copy box in the move function if you move copy which is this do you know the move move tool yeah this tool yep um, do that yeah, just and it will and if you click on copy yeah it will that's another way to do okay. it but you want to select the point, a convenient point, and a convenient point would be grabbing it by the bottom right and attaching it to the top left. Okay. So grab the bottom right corner. That's that's bottom left. Grab the bottom right corner and move it from there to the upper left corner up there. No, not not there. To the left, upper left. To the upper left corner. You're going up the stairs yeah. that way. <laughs> <laughs> and but you didn't click copy, but that you, that copied anyway. How come that worked? Because um, um, you already had a clone. Okay. Oh, I guess the clone is okay. Okay. But yeah, that's so. Does that work? Would that work for us? Zoom out. So let's think about it. Is this physically buildable? Like if we design it this way, so we can now analyze it. We just copy the simple uh, structure. We know that we're sitting on a on the landing on the first. Uh, okay but would that work so there's that piece of plywood that we attach at the back of the whatever we're um, back of the stair now what's an issue there we need to attach that bottom somewhere but I think we're cool we're cool on that so let's actually now okay quit and save it and let's now think about how do we attach this to the to the vertical walls because that will allow us also to attach the plywood which right now like what are you screwing that plywood into there's nothing there so like kind of flop in and out so let's address that issue um, and the simple way to do it so uh, let, let me share my screen take a look at my screen for a second and take a look at uh, stair uh, let's let me control F stair design stair design. Uh, let's see, FreeCAD stair designer maybe. <coughs> um, no, there's an arch workbench that has FreeCAD stair designer, but it's just it's a different style of stair, so we wouldn't really do what we need. We our design is a little different. So, but what I wanted to show um, f four by t uh, it's called four by twelve stairs no it's in the design guy so in the stair f oh yeah it's four by twelve stair treads 
this is what we're doing here um, with some videos here okay so standard stairs have these these stringers the cut out pieces but it's simpler if you do something more like this um, so look look what they're doing there there how are they attaching okay let's let's look at this how are they attaching this to the wall while well, they're screwing it into the wall well that's not a really a solid connection if you screw through the wall there you want to put a block underneath it to make it really safe so let's do that we can screw in something like a 2x4 into the walls and lay the treads on top of that so you never risk those screws coming out and stuff like that so I think that would be a convenient way to do it uh, okay so these are these this is similar to what we're doing now here they're not sure of the detail of how they attach it they might have some solid bolts or something but at least on one one of our walls which is the exterior walls we don't have access from the outside to drive like you'd have to drive some serious screws or or spikes to hold this easier way when you're just screwing to the walls that we already have is just put a block underneath it so that's what we'll do we'll just put a block under the treads so the weight of that rests on it so let's put that into our CAD file so next person wants to do that uh, it's Ken's gonna do this wow that's a big one um, is your computer available for that? So download the, the stair file mm -hmm. and let's put the supporting block. Now a convenient supporting block would be something like a 2x4. Um, it's strong, you can definitely get screws into it. I wouldn't go to less like a 2x2, two two. that might split if you put screws through it, it's a little weaker. I think 2x4s are good, uh, solid, it's no risk of falling, uh, just breaking or anything. So let's put a 2x4 on the front side to support the second, uh, second stair, which will allow us, if we put that 2x4 all the way to the plywood, you can screw the plywood now into that 2x4 so that the plywood is now supported on the edge but it doesn't address how the plywood would be supported at like w where it comes out like along the treads like there's nothing supporting the bottom of the plywood so what I'm seeing here is that we probably need to extend that plywood so we can screw it into the former tread and that's what I'm seeing um, but let's do one thing at a time let's do the supporting 2x4 underneath so if you share your screen yeah yeah so we got it shared so um, now we're going up the the hallway the stair hallway on a second stair uh, if you look at the sweet home file on the, in the work doc of today we see that the first two stairs are exposed the third one hides now hides behind the wall so but let's make believe this is the third stair and we actually got those supporting blocks because here what we could do is uh, something else we'll support them how do we support that we might have to cut out like a that little piece there to support the stairs here let's not worry about that right now so but let's worry about the bulk of the stair support which is attachment of the 2x4 to the wall so how would you draw that um, so say the second stair needs to be supported it's in in the wall cavity okay. what would you do there so draw a 2x4 which would be on face uh, the tall side on the edge of this will be both at the front and at the back so that's what we would have to do right now um, I thought you draw the cross it, well, this, this yeah, so you're looking like edge on the stairs, so you want to support it. That 2x4 has to be long enough to hit two studs in the walls that we're attaching to, so that's the constraint there. We know that we have 14 inch stud spacing, or you can call it 15.5 on center. So that block has to be like at least 15.5 in order to hit two studs. We want to support it, support every tread 
on two studs that would be a good idea because if you support it on one that's not so strong does that make sense so we've got the studs of the walls that we're attaching this to and we have we have effectively the I guess they call it 60 it's kind of like 16 on center kind of deal um, but we basically need the your 2x4 to be 16 plus it has to be as long as needed to hit the next stud like one stud and another stud we gotta connect it to two studs to make it very strong one it would just twi possibly twist on you um, so where do you put this stud so length um, we're working in the XY plane right so we started this design in the XY plane so what plane would you put this stud in if you're drawing it out face just the flat face facing you yeah yeah so go to the XY plane you get yourself a drawing there new sketch Would you mind going back out and sharing your entire screen? You're just sharing FreeCAD. then we can see what buttons you're hitting so yes XY plane just draw anything we can move it around and constrain it from there you, what you need is what shapes dimension do you need 3.5 by just make it like just make it 24 inches to keep it safe so we make sure we hit two studs and we'll do that we'll look at once we put the walls into the CAD we'll see exactly how long these studs have to be on on average so we make them all the same so what are your dimensions 24 and 3.5 horizontal will be 24 and the vertical will be 3.5 the, the vertical is 3.5 there yeah so you've got you looking at a 2 by 4 you can drag a corner and move it into the right place so let's see if you, you know where to go where would you put it yeah all the way to the edge now what you see we've just done is we put a backing at least to the edge of the, the plywood you can zoom in infinitely to get an accurate fit if you want uh, but that's the general idea and then what do you do to this you extrude it how much after you're done how much is that that will be one hell of an expensive piece of lumber that doesn't exist so you can't do that just do the 2x4 which is 1.5 that's all you have you can build them up one after another, but all you need is one. Yeah, yeah. One thickness, just 1.5. No, not, not across the whole stairs. We're using existing materials. So that obviously wouldn't, wouldn't work. This looks so weird. This looks weird. Why? What, looks what looks? looks bigger. In 3.5. Oh, it looks bigger than the actual stairs. Well, it is. Yeah. It's the stairs are a total of three high for the yeah, two treads. But, but, but it's eleven and a half wide. Eleven and a half. Yeah, but you got twenty-four. So y the point here I'm trying to make is that we're attaching this to the wall. This is not hanging in the air. Yeah. Right. That that looks good to me. What's wrong with it? It's not a two by four, right? It's three point five inches. Okay. Yeah, 3.5 by 24, that's uh, 2 by 4, that's oh, 24 that's inches. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's yeah. turned flat, so you can attach it to the wall next to it. It's flat against okay. the wall. Okay. And it's 2 by 12, 1.5.
Not a two by twelve, a two by four. You just drew a two by four, which is three point no, five. The step, the step itself. Step is two by twelve. Mm -hmm. Two two by twelves. Yep. So this is like about understanding materials. When you're designing, you're not just drawing anything. Whenever we design, we're saying, okay, these are the materials are avail that are available. Unless you can 3D print this or manufacture it yourself, you can do whatever you want. But right now, we got to just do what exists. So that's good. Now, let's spin it around. So 1.5. Spin around. Let's see what it did. Is that correct now? Uh, yeah, that that looks good to me. Uh, can you spin it? I could let her in. <laughs> Wiki wants to come in. Uh, spin it. L let me see. Like, not the standard angles, but spin it like just freeform. I want to see how it looks. Um, yeah right so does that look good oh, okay so what's that show you we're actually put it which so now tell me based on the geometry that we drew which side did we draw is it the exterior wall side or the interior wall side can you orient yourself uh, the only orientation we have right now is kind of from the other cat and like the picture in the sweet home let's so look at the sweet home picture can you orient that to what you just drew. Uh, so that's a three-dimensional thinking exercise. Which is the sweet home picture? So slide three in the in the working doc of today. So what's the answer to that one? Which one did we just draw? Anybody? Exterior. Yeah, it's next to the exterior wall. Yeah. Now, how would you do the interior? You probably could offset the sketch and draw the same thing. And then if you offset offset the sketch by the width of the stairs or a little less, then you'd catch it right at the other end. Or you can just move move this one that you drew as a three-dimensional shape, whichever is easier. So now we want to do the other tread. Okay, but that's so that's good like that's that is the geometry of the stairs of interest we haven't found out yet whether they're gonna end up at the top of the stairs that part we didn't determine yet but those are technically correct now okay about the attachment of the 3 8 inch plywood to the uh, so that it doesn't flop sounds like the answer here is make it longer right and attach it to the back of the former stair. And that's what the answer looks like to me. Because you're attaching it to the one stair, the underside of the upper stair, and then the back side. Yeah, so we'll just have to make them longer. The first one's going to be just a little shorter by 1.5. Uh, but the all the other ones... So somebody could actually start working on this, pending a, a full, complete design of the stairs. Um, the next thing is just keep repeating this pattern and see where we end up at the top and and probably the now that we know so we figured out geometry and buildability like we figured out that how do we go about to find the exact geometry when we end up at the top of the stairs uh, we could just manually repeat this pattern program it to repeat this pattern um, using no skill set we can just move and copy and make 15 of these which would be pretty fast actually you just gotta make 15 copies and see where you end up but now the trick is okay it didn't end up in the right place you have to iterate through that several times well what's the easiest thing to do that sounds like a little calculation you see okay what's the height we have to rise exactly and divide it by the number of treads so that would be the way to calculate so now you can make stair calculations and uh, yeah, based on our stair height, uh, step height, but you have to consider exactly the dimension, also the, the length dimension. So you got to look at two numbers there. Like, uh, it's a little problem of both the height rise and how far you're going per each step lengthwise, because we're constrained to end up at a very specific point. Um, 
I guess it's not trivial without having a stair designer which allows you to do this parametrically. Like say we're building a different house or maybe you built a house that's got a third floor and now you're going up only eight feet well this would change so we would need to to be effective at this we would need a parametric designer to make this really effective and quick which could easily be done in FreeCAD. Right now we're just doing it manually uh, but probably do some sketches and little calculations to say okay we're rising X amount and we're moving over X amount and therefore what are those two numbers um, and actually what's the number of treads like I think it's around 15 it might be like 16 or 14 or whatever I don't know uh, but someone would have to, to do that okay um, upload it so that's a basic uh, that's basic insights here now what else to cover for today um, what we can do today is so we're finishing up wall modules so still a couple that, that are left now for the roof and, f and second story floor platforms we start the second story platform in terms of the getting the all the pieces onto the, uh, the joists, like preparing them with the blocking so we have the location blocking and stuff like that we did a little bit of that um, is anyone still des doing design like on the module so, so people are doing still the, f the CAD of the remaining ones? Yeah, is there one? Yeah. You got that. Uh, what else do we have left? Um, uh, I think it was 51. I don't have, I uh, wasn't able to open the Sweet Home file, so I can't be 100% sure about the dimensions. Uh, so 51 is, we're we talking about the bathrooms? Yeah, that, okay, that's. Oh, okay, okay. I think we did. Oh, Sweet Home. I think it was on day 11 that, let's see, do we have that in this doc? Oh, look at that, that's that's actually slide 13. Yeah. Is that, does that suffice? I think that's, um, well, we got a free CAD file, and is that any? I don't think that's the right one, I'm not sure. Why is that say 62? Oh yeah, that's not. That should be 51. Um, okay. But I mean, I uploaded what I had. Okay. Uh, is that? Okay. So maybe do that. Uh, what else is outstanding? Let's see, Prince. You you have one you're working on still? I was working on the. Uh the windows for the second story. I was even those uploaded to the, uh, to that one. To the outline? Yeah. Okay. I think we just need two more. Alright. Uh, what about Joshua? I think I was, I was working on 63 and 64 yesterday. So 63 is the short wall. I think you, you made that one. But it has a, like the wall and then it come, the two panels come out like it kind of hooks into the... Oh yeah. Six. So I was trying to align that with uh, 64. Okay, because yeah, I don't think anyone drew up. So you drew up 63 or? 64. 64? 64 is the um, wall that comes off of the door, and then the edge of the, uh, the external wall is 63. So 63 was one that you created uh, in June or sometime. Yeah, then it wouldn't be, it would be just a placeholder. Yeah. Probably. Uh huh. So I, was, I, was, I need to go and adjust that and then upload and then I'll, yeah. I'll this to be done. Hello, Wes. Um, I am open to work on whatever needs to be done. Uh, how about you for the roof? How about do the roof platform, which means taking what we have for the second story floor, and now it doesn't have any features. It's just a one big slab. 
16 by 32 with the edges being there's only one detail that one has to remember and let's actually write it down so on the second floor we're going to have a ceiling that means uh, the end joists which were before they span 5.5 .5 inches you remember that they because they laid directly against the wall uh, on top of a wall we have to take them out three quarters of an inch so we can have something to screw in the ceiling so that's the only difference in the entire comp entire thing compared to the structure of the, the second story floor does that make sense no. do you see that let's d draw a little diagram here so um, so maybe page two slide duplicate slide uh, so roof roof frame We're getting there. We're we're, we're close. Uh, we've got just a few more things. Okay. So for the roof frame, well, we I would start with go to the roof platform and see if that's documented there already. Uh, the rough rough detail. This thing. Um, no, no. Okay. Well, that's the roof rafters, but what I'm saying is that the two edge joists, they're separated. They're not 5.5, but instead they're 6.25 to their outer thing, to their outer limit. Um, yeah, so it's page 19 there. So we, we do that. So start with, I'm going to say, Okay, start with a concept. So the only thing we have to pay attention to is this. So, okay, that's the edge joist. That's the only difference there. You see that? So that distance is 6.25. In the former version, that was that distance was 5.5. But the basic thing is you're going to have to attach a ceiling to it, and you wouldn't have any place to attach the ceiling there if you didn't have that uh, those roof rafters sticking out a little bit. Because we're t attaching the ceiling to all the roof rafters, and they're spa spaced exactly at 24 inches. So once again, the spacing, just like before on the floor, those 24 inches between all of them. And you can look at the former CAD file, which um, the second story platform, which does have the full, well, most of, yeah, I mean, just about minus the sheeting, but it's, we, we do have the CAD here. So if you look at the second story floor, so the roof is basically, like you said, the same as the second floor story without the stairs mm -hmm. and then with uh, that metal sheeting. Are we going to have the CAD for that? Uh, the or should we just add a claim to represent it? It's three point. Uh, it's point seven five by 4 by 8 so it's just, it looks the same, but it's got a pattern such that you got to stagger the edges. Don't like put it, like for example, here in this file, 
so this is the working file for the second story platform and what I what I showed before was that this distance here was 5.5 because that should be above the the frame of the first story walls for the and that's the distance you're saying should be 6.25 but the distance between this one and that one all that is going to remain the same because you still got to put the plywood on at I the same I place. I don't understand though why the distance is increasing to six. To so I'll draw it for you right now, um, real quick as a detail. So um, so let's take a look at that. So we've got. So say we got the joist that's. We got 1.5. Then you've got the length, which is 192, but it's not 192, it's 189, first of all, because it's 3 inches less. So you got this one joist here, um, and then So I'm going to copy that, so control C and, and V, and go, so that distance is going to be, I'm going to constrain that, That's, that we're saying is 6.25, 6.25, and then the vertical is, that's zero. So they're aligned here, so they're zero this way. What happened there? That and that, this. And then we have the ones next to here. So I'll, I'll upload this file since it's getting started already. But um, these are 1.5, and this is, I'll call that 192. that's the detail there um, okay so now we extrude that to 12 11.25 so we've got the corner that we're looking at there okay so that's the top the sheathing goes on the top so let's just draw like the first sheet here uh, which is going to be Let's just draw another sketch for the sheeting. So that's going to be at 11.25. So the sheeting on top is going to be 11.25. And what is going to be thick for thickness? It's going to be three quarters. So there, there's the top, top ceiling, top of the roof there. Now, uh, what's underneath it? Well, that's not the roof. That's actually that second box for the two, the styrofoam insulation. So uh, this is actually not correct. It's actually this extends up but below what's important is below uh, since the walls are sitting below um, so if you do let's do a sample wall x y at at zero in the reverse yeah okay so the walls are underneath here right they're gonna be like this 
how they're 5.5 by So the walls are underneath there, and you see they don't go all the way to the edge, so I'll pad that out in the reverse direction of 96, uh, there. So that's what's happening there. See what I just did? There there's this little lip, so now the ceiling can be attached to it. If you move that all the way over, you'd have nothing to attach the ceiling to. So this is very convenient. Otherwise, you have to put a, like another whole strip to attach the, the ceiling, roof to it. You mean, like, what do you mean? The it's wood. We're using the four by eight panels, same ones as on a wall for the ceiling. Okay. So you're attaching the ceiling to that so little rim there. Or like yeah. Is it is it plywood? Or it is plywood. It's the same orient. The it's called the beadboard. The same stuff as an interior plywood for the walls. Same stuff. So just one kind of material. Same thing as we have in the CD home on the walls. That's the idea there. Uh, yeah, let me upload that. So maybe you want to use that for a start. Well, okay, but why is want. that not the case on the second? Story? Because we don't have a ceiling there. It's open. The joists are open. You don't have insulation there or anything. Like you can leave it open. You can put a ceiling in there, but it's just a bunch of extra work, so it's it's not needed. But on the top, yeah, there's insulation in there. You need a ceiling because you're insulating from the exterior. Okay, and the insulation... We're filling all those cavities, the 24 inch centers, with insulation, with thick insulation, the fiberglass stuff. Well, wh why... I'm just still don't understand why the second story, the second story floor wouldn't also have that. The insulation? Is it, no, I get it doesn't have insulation. But why does insulation require you have extra space um, between the first two headers? It's not the insulation, it's, it's the ceiling that then traps the insulation, otherwise the insulation will fall on your head. So yeah. you're just closing up the, the cavity. And so there's no ceiling on the first... Yeah, there's no, no ceiling. ceiling. It's exactly what we have at our house, the CD home one. It's exposed <laughs> rafters. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's it's fine. It looks attractive. You know, you can put a ceiling in if you want. It's just extra cost, but it's, it doesn't really do anything outside of looks. Uh, I don't know if people like to have a flat ceiling. That's cool. But it's also if you're building it. I mean, to get that up above your head, that's hard work too. So I wouldn't look forward to doing that myself. You know, like if we're doing it, that's. You kind of have to have this platform, and you've got to go up there and screw above you. It's kind of hard. So if you're building it, try, you know, it's def definitely convenient to do it only when you have to, and you have to do it for the for the roof. You don't have to do it for the first the first floor thing. Does it help with sound insulation too? Uh, so the case for the insulation within on the second floor, yes, sound would get deadened. Like if someone's walking on top, because you got all that insulation, it would deaden the sound. So that is a definite advantage. What we're doing is we're doing underlayment for the second story floor. It's this thin foam for sound deadening. It's sound deadening foam. So, but that, that would be the advantage. Or like if you say you want to take your house and you want to keep the entire second floor completely frozen in the winter, then yeah, you have the insulated floor. And I mean, if, if you want to like isolate your house, close off the walkway to the top, the second story, you can heat like the bottom of your house only in winters, you know, save like half in the heat or whatever. So that would be a case for that if, you, if you're interested in that, but what beyond that there's no... What are we going to do for flooring? For second stor story flooring there's the planks, we cut up these planks, so it's like a wooden plank floor. It's stained and stuff like that, we already have that all prepared, uh, we did that. And for the first floor it was just the concrete with stone sealer. So get that shined up, uh, pressure wash it and, and put stone sealer so it looks kind of shiny. That's, that's all, just very simple. Um, yeah, and you can put like, if people want, they can put rug or whatever. I don't really like carpet because it gets too much dirt in. Like on a farm, rugs don't make sen a lot of sense. Yeah. You got too much dirt and stuff. In a city it might be a little better, but even in a city, it's a carpet is a high maintenance item. You got to vacuum it all the time. 
it's not easy to clean it whereas uh, just plain floor it's easy to easy to clean Like a veneer. Yeah, the, what we're trying to do is kind of like it's plywood. What we have on the second floor, it's kind of like veneer, except that a fraction of the cost. We just took plywood and stained it and painted it. So you'll see how it looks. It's it's a it's a way to do it at about like fifty cents a square foot, as opposed to oh, yeah. more like ten dollars a square foot. So if you do veneer floor, you're talking about like another five thousand. Yeah, but dollars. walnut or bamboo veneer for If you've got five thousand bucks, that's that's a great addition. Well, you want to spend a little more on bamboo. So we are growing bamboo. 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 Anywhere so you can you grow it yourself. Three or four years. It does make a lot of sense to take <laughs> some of the trees because for veneer, all you need is thin planks. So you, that makes sense to actually do the sawmill and mill that because that's high value wood. Like for floors, you plane it and and it's amazing What's stuff. That you yield up here, so. Really and then, um, like if you talk about sustainable forestry, what's the natural replacement rate per acre? It's about 2,000 pounds of wood per acre that just gets replaced every year. So if you take off 2,000, you're pretty much keeping the entire good condition of the forest without depleting it. So there's, I mean, it's a renewable resource, so it does make sense. And for floors, it's a good thing, like hardwood floors. So that's a good thing. So I just uh, uploaded the roof CAD start to my log.
is completely the last step out. Yeah.
Oh, um, this yeah, one? Yes, yeah, it's in there. Oh, um, shit. Yeah. It almost, it's really hard to see. Uh, yes, it's... it's uh, will you oh. try, um, uh, could you try um, uploading the latest one? Because I just moved that up there. Okay, let me, let me get it. Yeah, I can 
add it to the list, but I can't like add it to the cart because it's, it's only in the store pick up. Oh yeah. But it, how does that know that we? Oh, I guess because we, we chose a store. Yeah, like I, I chose the the Cameron location because that's that's where we. Yeah, I would add it to the list then. Yeah, yeah so that, that's what I've been doing. I just added it to. The, yeah, let's just create one list and we can call it something generic like list. Well, there, there's the your list, and you know, I just created those separate things. But yeah, one, one list is probably better. I thought that was just going through it. They don't do that, Cameron. Are we supposed to do that same thing? Uh, it's uncertain. I thought they had to pick up uh, Cameron, but Jeff said they had to pick up at St. Joseph instead. But even if they have pick up, that's a limited number, it's a limited part of the selection, like Wes just said. So I would just say, like, order the thing that you really want, and if you, we can't pick it up, then Jeff will have to go shopping in the aisle at the moment. Does that have to be checked? <laughs> we could help him, yeah. I think he's a little self-conscious because it's like part of his job description, but he already does so much. Yeah. Yeah. I don't mind going. Get that van running. I'll go and do whatever we need. Yeah. I guess it's also like time away. Like Martin may not want us to take time away from Saturday. Yeah, we're on Sunday. We go on Sunday, yeah. I'm okay with that too. I mean, otherwise, we only survive. Yeah, I mean, I got some food, like ground beef and veggie ground beef for chili tonight. And uh, I don't know, <coughs> yeah, eat out of cans tomorrow. And, uh, no, thank you for know, that. <laughs> the chili food. Yeah. Yeah. I think we'll, we'll let. I mean, when I first arrived here, we were much closer to starving off of tortilla chips and, <laughs> and cookies.
Yeah, so yeah. I mean, I, that's an operating system setting. You should you can change it to a left-handed mouse. So yeah, that's the top. It looks like the ceiling is. You can scroll with the mouse wheel to get closer. But yeah, the ceiling sits on the top. So probably that's uh, that's how we'll attach it. I probably screw it from the, the bottom side. Okay. Okay. So we just went to the side. Yeah. Um, but I mean, while you have it open, you can take the measurements of the shelf and the ceiling. Because we have the measurements for the walls. The walls are just 91. I don't know if we have enough 2 by 4s Yeah, unfortunately, I, I cut the ones yesterday too short, so we can't reuse them. We might be able to use them for the ceiling. Yeah, that's true. I'll save them for sure. So yeah, if you take the, take the measurements out of those and write them down or uh, yeah. create a cheat sheet that we can cut in a second.
this is still a 36 inch depth. So the easiest thing to do is to make a 36 inch top plate.
I made some open source stakes on CAD, <laughs> and, then I, uh, and then I put the garlic on the stakes. You are the fastest of us at CAD, that's true. I, I would have it was up here right in this jar. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, like, I have used them. I didn't personally use it, with them, but I saw somebody take it out. Wait, what? Which is fine, I love garlic. I just remember. There's a lot of garlic. Yeah, there was like, a, like two packs. CAD 19 supports reordering. Uh, let, let's, let's see right now. Maybe. <laughs> Come on, guys, it's selling beta. It's 0.16. <laughs> right, I, I, the whole entire system that we kind of. I actually managed to make the roof module. And it's not a bunch of different. It's not all the same sketch. <laughs> I want to see the roof model. Are those the joists or the rafters? Actually, these are joists. Okay. These these are called room joists, and these are just joists. Joists is a start and then Yeah, I, we should have gone over terminology in my opinion, but I can just look up the construction terminology on Wikipedia. So are the are the rafters above or below the joists? I don't even know if there are rafters, okay. right? Because like our rafters are like I don't care if this joist. A rafter is a sloped structural member, such as a wooden beam that extends from a ridge to a wall plate, and. Okay, so it's only for sloped roofs. Versus a joint, which is a, a, joist. a joist, which is a Just horizontal stroke. Okay, so. So rafter and joist are the same, except rafters can be angled. And joists have to be have a horizontal constraint. Where it. Okay, um. Got to be done like the first thing with this old. Maybe, maybe the. Maybe a raptor is a series of joists. <laughs> no, no. No. Raptor versus joist. Okay. This they literally just copied the different Wikipedia page. And oh my gosh, all it does is copy the Wikipedia pages. Yeah, I wouldn't trust that. Yeah, so I don't think they're rafters because they're not sloped. 
Okay, but that's... Uh, do we even have a ridge in this, in any of the... Uh, so we don't. We have a high side and a low side of slope roof. And that's why I'm thinking they're not rafters, because there's no ridge. Yep. If there was a ridge, then they would go from joists to rafters. It's like a Pokemon. Why is everything like Pokemon? <laughs> <laughs> I think I, you can do that in free cat 20, which is why I was kind of trying to see. Free cat 20? <laughs> y'all, y'all are behind if you haven't built it from the source. <laughs> is that what 20 is? What have you built from the source? Well, just go ahead yeah. and make it. In free cat 20, you just push a button and it designs the seat on for you.
Some of the stuff is shipping. I got I don't even know if this actually makes a difference, but I got some plants that are supposed to repel insects. Oh wow. Uh, no, I'm I'm sure they will. They they, they do their job. And they're always appreciated. Supposed to get here uh, next Thursday. Like uh just like the, the you know, like the the oils extracted from the plants. Yeah. The plants alone can help repel things because they just don't, they don't care for the oil, they don't care for the whole plant in general. Yeah. Venus fly traps for the flies. Mm -hmm. Venus fly traps just be like the size of the next 3D for 8 feet. Oh. Yep.
Is it muddy outside? Sorry? Is there a lot of mud outside? Uh, actually, no. Hmm. <laughs> Oh man. 
thank you. Yeah. I actually put a, uh, I put clip bars on the list. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah so good. we'll see. Those, those should uh, help feed people. Let me see. I've seen a clip bar in a while.
Spaghetti in the form of a truss. Okay. Um, as long as it's uncooked. Actually, it's uh, it's panini and it is cooked. Oh soon. my god. I was gonna say it's not gonna be safe for the mice, but it won't be safe for me if it's panini. <laughs> we eat all of our trusses.
where we're going to. Silk plates or workshop work? We can do silk plates. We can do the earthworks around the foundation right now because it's still wet. But silk plates are game. So is, I mean, we could be making the stair treads as in putting those pieces together, cutting the lumber to size, or making the the, jo the jo roof joists like we did before for the second story platform, uh, i.e. Uh, sticking on those spacers and all that, those locating things on the second store, second story, uh, do the same thing for the roof part. So there's all that lumber there. But the, the foundation work is there too. So like the sill plate. So we could do sill plate as well. Um, foundation or, or where? No workshop. Uh, maybe like see if the, yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll do the sill plate, change of pace still. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If we have any time afterwards, we can come back. Uh, so for silk plates, we need hammers. There's uh, there's nails out there, hammers, and uh, the materials out there. Yeah, people will probably get some silk plates. Hammers. So grab a hammer, and then uh, the saw out there. We need that to cut. There's the hammer stapling, that's definitely a part of the process. Uh, we put them all onto the sill plate, put all the sill plates on, cut them out later. So we're going to have to ram set a few holes, a few uh, places where we actually need to grind off. Okay, we need a grinder. We need to grind off like maybe one or two of the mud sill anchors. I think because we changed the location of doors, there might be one or two. We need. We should have that, uh, so make sure you have that on your cell phone, have the floor plan for the foundation. Uh, keep that, because those dimensions there are good for what we need. Um, Wait, what? 
counters. What about the footprint? Uh, make sure you have the, the drawing on your phone, the, oh, the diagram we had from before. Let me see, make sure I have that. Uh, those dimensions are good. So hammers, everybody. Beyond that. There's only like one one hammer out there, so we need to uh, should get one for each of us. We can just nail this thing down pretty quickly. Uh, this was the day 12. What slides? Where's it on today's slide as well? It's still floating. Uh, Not sure if it's on today's. Uh, it was Wednesday's. Let's see. Um. Yeah, it's still in today's yeah, doc. Yeah, Day 14, it's still in there, so we're good. And if you guys remember, so like for example, Joshua, do you remember when you made the placeholder door, do you recall the bottom piece? Was it Does it match our current plan of 39 inches? Do you remember? One thing we can verify is a couple of those apertures. Um, let's just check that real so, quick. So the, so the bottom piece needs to be 39? Yeah, because it's sitting right on, it's going to sit right on the foundation. Like the, the total is 48 because it's just four foot. Right. And then the two other, minus the two other pieces on the side. Okay. Maybe check. Yeah, let's see. That's module, what number was that? Four, uh, nine. five, six, seven, eight, nine. Verify that hole. And by the way, so I just talked to at lunch, I talked to, so Jesse uh, connected me to some guy who's a vet who, who works in, he actually is building currently, he put up 12, 12 micro houses for, for homeless people in Washington state. And he's doing 12 more in September. But he said, hey, uh, we're gonna build the next one. If you wanna do the micro house, <laughs> we'll take about four or four to 10 of them. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. He asked us to build houses with him. Yeah, he's saying like he likes. Basically, Jesse made the introduction, and then this guy said, "Hey, okay, your stuff is cool. Is your price point okay? And can you yeah, deliver it?" Just like and we point. said, "Yeah, we are. Uh, they're actually building 400, 350 square footers that are all in cost of about about 150k a pop. So we've got. Right. I mean, we can do better." Um, so, uh, so in other words, what happens is, uh, so he's going to look at those grants. Uh, he, basically, the state's giving them <coughs> money because they have a declaration that you got to have a certain amount of affordable or like homeless housing. They have that in Washington State. So he's going to be going through the next cycle after this 24 houses to get the next batch. But that's happening next year, like summer, next summer that would be being built so hey we're doing well so far i mean we just have to have a product that's all right. we're working on it uh but i think that's really good news it's like i mean i would expect that yeah i mean once we finish this and we um, document we're, i think there's gonna be plenty of opportunities because i think we're just efficient so we'll see Okay, so um, you're saying he's charging 150,000. Right now, the state is paying him. In fact, I mean, he said the price point was. Um, I was getting off the one. 175,000 per person housed. Yes, because. 350 square feet. That's what it seemed like. Because he's building 350 square feet. Wow. So it's like insane. Yeah. Um, 
there yeah. a link to this project? Like what design? Um, like I, have a, I have a ton of questions. <laughs> yeah, so do I. I One of which I'll share. Like there was a. How is he paying for it? Only thing I, I, I heard from him was it's called Wolf Industries, is where he gets the funding, not the funding, the houses. He buys from a kit home manufacturer. Okay. As far as the project is supplies, this is a state project. So this is through Washington. Okay. I'll get the name of that. I didn't even catch it. Um, yeah, I can ask Brian, Brian too. Yeah, Brian, ask Brian what the project is. I think Brian knows knows what's going on there. Let's find out more about that. I mean, that's you know all interesting stuff. But I think the point is that there's a lot of opportunities like that. If you can deliver, you can get contracted for this by the states or other entities that do this. Well, I'm measuring 38.5 on the on the cutout. So as well as the other door. So what we need to do is uh, in our diagram we have 39 for the pre-frame doors. Uh, shrink that by a half an inch. So just make a note of that when we do the cutting. What's 39? So the two door cutouts on the first floor. Uh, the diagram says 39, that should be 38.5. I'm just reading off the files that we already built, which are... Like the width of the door? Yeah, so the, the door is 48, but it sits on the top plate. There's a cutout for the hidden door, and then there's a, and then there's the frame for the exterior door that's already there, and that, that hole is also 38.5. So uh, on the thing we have on our cell phones, it says 39 for those cutouts, so we just got to shrink it a quarter inch. So go to 38.5. Uh, that's the only thing to keep in mind for today outside of what's on the diagram. And let's see, door 22. That should be good.
Here and I forget why I'm. Why? Oh, you, why did I come back? So that camera, I must have left it at the workshop. Oh, uh, yeah. So the battery is probably dead right now. I have a, I have a small portable battery. As long as I have the cable. Up.
Hello? Hello?
Yeah, yeah. These came today. I was glad they did because uh, I just put the other ones right there for other people to borrow, maybe. But <laughs> well, yours, uh, yours look a little bit different. Right. Are they, uh, I usually keep them in the, in the room anyway.
think uh, I'll tell you about the event for tomorrow there, too, if we need to.
wish they could have containers. Like Tupperware? Yeah. Yeah, the two of them. I think I'm getting to the Hyrax or something. For, for my own leftovers, I would encourage me to save food. I would like eat the leftovers, I would like eat better, I would waste less food. Yeah. Lots of things. So, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Should have worked for it. Well, it's one of those things where you, uh, listen to have a company, you know, like a mess.
the first the, couple, the first weekend we were here, I think we were running low on food and we were definitely scrounging. It wasn't quite that bad. But I just I didn't even stop looking through that. I just was like, what do we have here? Bread, like peanut butter, and, and cheese. Peanut butter and cheese. <laughs> one at a time, one at a time. Sour cream.
friend of mine washed the pink cups in my house and I was like, it smells like that.
You already put the uh, plant in.
the top. Oh, no, I should look at this. Okay. I don't think it's crap. No. One of them will. That one, maybe we can still feel together. Sorry. I thought there was some of the other kind of things. Well, we've got more of the kind of things. Oh, he's so bad. I okay. I am not it's a safe space. Uh I'm okay. pretty neutral on that. Uh, you don't care. <laughs> 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 well I think that that's cool. Here's what we fresh mayor. Well, here's the thing. The birth rates in declining countries are falling. <laughs> so that's a thing. Birth rates in developed countries are, are lower places. Yeah. So the population will decline. Yeah. In some places, it's very dramatic. And I think that is a bad thing. I actually believe that. I believe that the population just, I believe in population growth. Really? Yes. I mean, that's like, capitalism depends on it. Okay. I, mean, I, well, I don't believe in I know population you growth, just people's capitalism. But that's, yeah, that's one thing. City, property taxes, you know, a lot of people mortgage things in the future because, like, they don't fall down, they just become a growth. So. Yeah, and you're also not from um, you know, the people in the I was surprised though, to me it, it blows my mind that half a million people can die in the US and then while and, and, and simultaneously the real estate prices like chug higher. Oh yeah, it's like it's like it's like if ten million people die in real estate would double. Well, of course, I'm talking about certain
Right. I think there's usually an option to add like one or two or however many. Um, if you add to try adding it to the list and seeing if you can update the number. 
Okay. And then go to uh, groceries. Uh, yeah, like like go to the uh, actual. Uh, 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 yeah, my items. Did you log in with the um the password? Uh yeah, uh, but um only once and then I came back and then Okay. I actually got a um if you wanna see. I don't know. I don't know if you like tea tree oil. Yeah, that's the, you know, I like tea tree oil, but it's, it's Dr. Bronner still. Okay. Oh, yeah, I put Dr. Bronner's on the list. Okay. Yeah, it's just, we got, we got oh. this one. Oh, well, then I'm going to take right. it off the list. Okay. We got, we, we got we, plenty already. We can only put the funky piece here. Mm. What's that? Uh, funky piece, because that was, um, you know, a uh, bell pepper. Right? Yeah. So you, you can put as many as you want. You, yeah, yeah, you should be a... Exactly. If you want like yeah, what six I, what, what, I, what I meant was um, you know if I would say red peppers here. Yeah. Say, uh, see. Yeah. your bell peppers. Oh. Only one left. <laughs> well, uh, I wouldn't believe them. <laughs> one left. Let me go grab this one out of. Kind of a poor supply chain. <laughs> Okay, no, no, it has a thing. I just seen a point of Great, 
I hope I don't mess up. Well, I'll fix this one to make sure, but I'm 90% sure this is going to be. Yeah, Wes, you got the vegan one. We wouldn't want you eating a uh, plant based meat. That would be such a tragedy. Yeah. I would want animals to suffer and die. Yeah. 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 There's already ramen here in this very building. Yeah, oh, no, no, no. What happened was uh, last time they had like a limited time because they were only there to. Oh, I, see. I was in, I, I'm imputing a motive which may not be there. No. No, I think I think Jeff would get us here. <laughs> yeah, I get some more of the. What'd you get? What was the kind of raspberry? That? Porter, yeah, some porter would be nice. They're not gonna have that. I don't think Jeff's holding on to that spear. I don't think it's a fake baby. Kidnap a bunch from the Amazon rainforest, and, yes. and then put them in, door, in a giant greenhouse thing. Yeah, we're gonna have to get a project down there <laughs> since <you> know, <laughs> everything's changed in forests. Screw the rainforest! I want to live in an unnatural house. Send me the right. It'll be like um, ball bar but for butterflies instead of the seeds. The butterfly shoot up all. Butterfly LA. Compliments to the chefs. Of course, this high effort. Here, cutting up everything. 
I couldn't have done it without that little bit of Mexican music. Mm. And Paul, by the way. Just uh, <laughs> no, <especially> the <laughs> Pretty sure it's Blackstone, but anyway, um, they were buying up rental properties uh, like crazy, and uh, this is basically the game uh, to get into the industries where people don't have a choice but to um, but to pay you money um, if they want a modern standard of living. They like to invest in utilities. Um, they are, of course, uh, a lot of Wall Street is banks, um, and uh, so they'll also, most of the loans that they give out are, of course, mortgages, you need a house to live in. They also give out loans for people who want to advance in life in other ways, like um, if you want uh, an education, they'll give you a student loan. But at the end of the day, what they have is like they've positioned themselves into a way that uh, they can siphon as much disposable income as, as possible. They have the pricing power because the things that the products and services that they're providing are things that you feel like you can't live without. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, whenever anybody's interested, uh, if anybody wants to go to the pitchforks for Wall Street, I'm, I'm down. Let's go now. <laughs> get your pitchforks, guys. <laughs> Yeah, but, but do you own any stocks at all? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are you, are you glad that Wall Street banks are like working so hard? Wait. Hmm? Are you glad that Wall Street institutions are like enabling you to invest in these businesses and that they're continuing to? Well, I mean, uh, it's not just Wall Street. I mean, businesses sell products to consumers yeah, so all the, over the world. Wall Street's just the brokers. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, Wall Street is, is the problem. So they, they are they are the main problem with well, the economy. They run the, the financial, casino, the like financial sector is the growth of the financial sector is like 
has a parasitic relationship with the broader economy. When when the financial sector gets too big, which it is today, um, that's that's what ends up happening. Is it slows down growth, it raises the cost of living, um, and makes it more difficult for people to start businesses. Um, they're stifling. I mean, yeah, they're they're it's it's stifling the economy, but. Um, I mean, I'm my the only company I'm invested in is Amherst. Um, it's what? Amherst. Is that a tech company? Yeah. And I mean, you can't be invested in in the market without, at least in some way, benefiting from uh, quantitative easing. Um, I mean, it's increased the valuation of the company. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean. Stimulus checks. Right. Also raise the price of assets with people have more money to buy them. Right. And they're at home and have nothing better to do. Right. Yeah. But, I mean I, I gotta I gotta um, take care of numero uno to some extent. So <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it's just the game that I'm it's a game I'm playing for sure. That's how it always has to be for it to continue. One people with one foot in, if you are looking and paying attention to how things are going, you want to make some kind of change. And then one foot out, trying to work toward the change. Now. Yeah. It's tough to be in the, on the inside. You know, you've got a lot of money and stuff for recognition and prestige. Mm -hmm. Even if you think it's going to grow up I mean, there's no way you have a sense of confidence and security, like you can go and participate in the work market, you can go and buy assets and resources and run and not buy yourself in front of it. More or less on your own and trying to figure out how to make it work without all the other support from the market. It's very difficult for somebody who's living comfortably to be a part of the solution. Because they they're not going to see the problem. Um, so uh, if you're somebody who's <laughs> a politician, and of course you got the best health care, health insurance available, and uh, you're making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, um, and you're also thinking about your career options next, you're you're probably going to be part of the problem. There are so many incentives because you, if you want uh, if you lose your job, which members of the House are up for election every two years, you, you got to go buy something, you got to work somewhere else and you probably don't want to cut off the, your relationship with some of those lobbying firms. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you're definitely defending, you're protecting your wealth. Yeah. Do we have any more talking shows? Yeah. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. Uh, half the box that I opened up is still there, and then there's another box. It's all up. I mean, everything's a part of you. Make America great again. Like, you know, fix health care. I mean, get people jobs. You know, do this and that. And suspects are where the cost of living is rising right now. Because those are the places where um, a lot of the rental properties have been bought up. Um, there was a lot more buying activity there because people were moving out of the bigger cities, the bigger, most expensive cities, and taking advantage of being able to work remotely. Right, and, and having a higher salary, like, like California, Las Vegas, yeah. or Henderson, Nevada. Yeah, so the price is a little bit down in San Francisco, but it's gone right. up in Fresno and Stockton and all Sacramento, all those surrounding smaller cities <laughs> is where the price of living has gone up. Right. And the prices, the prices in Vegas have gone up significantly. I mean, they've been rising for a while. Oh, now yeah. it's, it's even faster. But then oh, yeah. 
that's a favorite destination for Californians. Realistically looking at it, what what does it have to offer? Like any of the land. What does Las like Vegas? like Nevada in general? Like um, look at the land the land mass. It's part of the Dust Bowl, it's desert, yeah. there's no there's really no Yeah. You can't do anything without a, a lot of work and effort. Sure. But uh, that's that's from the perspective of somebody who wants to use the land for a purpose. Um, uh, productive purpose. <laughs> right, exactly. Anyway, right. Uh, for most people, um, they're it's just, thinking about, you know, state income taxes are lower. Right. Um, and my my home value appreciating yeah. so I can resell it and yeah. go get something bigger. Right. Yep. Is there anywhere left where the prices have not gone? Detroit, New Orleans. I mean, the prices are Kansas. higher than they normally are. Yeah, they were already pretty low. So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now it's the South. South. The, mid, the Midwest and the South, which are the places like what we're talking about, the, there's opportunity there for a person to, you know, make it on their own without having a big box store there. Yeah. And or having have having to have water uh, hauled in. Or yeah, I mean, the Rust Belt in general, I think, is always a good place if you're looking for cheap land. What is the Rust Belt? Um, all the places that used to be centers for manufacturing, Ohio, um, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, yeah. Michigan. Maryland? Maryland, I don't know. Okay. I don't know much about Maryland, or if it, if it fits into the, Let me look up the Rust Belt. I don't mm-hmm. think Maryland. Is certain really certain parts of Maryland are really cheap just because yeah. they're rural, but like Silver Spring, like Montgomery mm-hmm. County, I think that's one of the richest counties in the U.S. If I'm not mistaken. I begged my parents to buy uh, a house in D.C. a few years ago. Oh, oh that'd no, be good. <laughs> that'd be expensive. I was telling them like, no. I'm, I'm telling them you have to do it because. <laughs> Amazon is going to announce they're moving. They're they gonna, did, didn't yeah, they, they did. And uh, I was telling them they're going to announce <laughs> right it, in with the and it, all the it's, legislature and to lobby directly. Oh my God! Literally, yeah, take you yeah. out to coasting and to be the home sandwich. team, yeah. basically. Okay, I was in charge of managing our mind when I won. <laughs> they called to like Bitcoin, like Tesla started accepting it, or said they would accept it. No. Yeah. Called the Amazon headquarters. Clearly, you need to be our guy. You need to be our Tim Geithner. Oh man! Don't be a regulator. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta give us the inside scoop. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. That's just owned a house in DC for a while. Yeah. Um, it was a nice house, but it there's just a lot of pockets concentrated mm-hmm. in certain areas, so the neighborhood wasn't really that great. So she ended up moving. I think instead of like a five hundred, six hundred thousand dollar home, they have a well, million dollar home now. Wow. Well, yeah. I don't know if it's really awesome, awesome for like in <laughs> the future of the country that uh, land and real estate has become a speculative asset, but I'm happy for her that she uh, got on the property ladder. Uh, I mean, that, it's, it's, it's great that they have a home and that they can comfortably live there. Yeah. I just, fundamentally, I don't be able to see that. Yeah. So, Ohio is the only state that is entirely in the Rust Belt. Oh, I see. It is a belt, though. Mm-hmm. And it's surrounded with great hikes. Yeah. Do you think it's because of lake access, like shipping to Canada? And Probably. Um, I uh, think there was also the, uh, what is that river? Well, the Ohio River. Some Yeah, there, it's, it's a long, there's a lot think. of different reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Great Lakes has good water as well. I mean, it's like it's like the it's a great place for settling if you're gonna try to do something. Yeah. 
It's outside the box. Yeah. So why are you understanding the Friday population? Well, I think it has very strong implications for how technology evolves and how social relationships evolve. And hmm. and it also is a reflection of like history and the present. I mean You know, where I think where it gets really controversial is where you, you say things like, okay, it is like, is, uh, is uh, uh, like higher education for women associated with the declining population? Of course. And you oh. say, yeah, okay, but then like, what are the implications for that? And then that's, then it's the issue starts to become pretty intense. Do you think it's a problem? I think I'm going to finish. Well, I mean, you know, just in general. Well, there's uh, spaghetti and meatballs. Both ways you can look at it, I guess. Well, there's urbanization. That, so there's two, two, I think there's two prob problems. One is declining population, mm -hmm. and another is like complete urbanization. I mean, I guess the urbanization is not necessarily a problem because I like living in a city with lots of other people. But, you know, the, I can make more ground beef, too. the cost of urbanization, at least environmentally and really, you know, Otherwise, cost of living is higher there generally. Yeah. Yeah, but the cost of the, you know, you can see. No, I'm not even thinking. Now you want to do things for yourself, or you want to make that your own way. Like all, all the other things that you'd be able to do out here, you know, make your own kind of decisions because you're part of a collective more so. But, you know, that's, that's what you choose from. Even though that still can be the case, it just has to. There has to be a re reimagining of how cities work and how people live in them. But that's that's something else. Yeah, mm. so I think <laughs> it's hard, right? Because I want to move around between lots of different cities and so there are things like community gardens which I feel like by the time I discover them, I'm already kind of like halfway out of it, halfway on to something else. And what I I think community gardens are so interesting because they mainly pop up in like really low cost or blighted areas of cities. Right. So like, you know, back in, in my in my small town of Smithfield, there are no community gardens anywhere. Pretty much anywhere in I mean there are there are a couple in like Salt Lake City. That really? But they're I mean, really just centrally owned and like that so will let you garden a little bit here right. if, you, if you get involved. That, that's what I thought. I was like, I, I know there's probably homeless there, but I, I can't imagine that there's blight in Salt Lake oh, City. No, just yeah, be, just because that's why there's not more community gardens. Yeah. And yeah, there are definitely homeless people like right. hanging out at the library all the time. But uh, it's, it's really hard. Like, there's not the, the polarizing race issue. Like, I don't know if that's so prevalent there. At least from what I've seen. Yeah, I you mean, know, that's, that's, yeah, that's an interesting. Like Chicago, in certain parts, in, in the inner city, where um, you know, projects used to be built at, and there's corner stores, liquor stores, that you can imagine the type of individuals live there, but the rest of Chicago, Morning Park, the you know, northern part is the better area where there's more diversity. So do we, our city still like segregated basically by race? Segregated by 
race because of social economic factors. Not necessarily because of race, but of course, but generally certain groups of people make less money. And I mean, I don't know. I don't really know what to say about that. Do you have anything to say about the, the disparity in income in cities with African American, black versus? I mean, take any city. You go to a certain area, you know what's going on. You didn't have to say that like that. Black affluence, just because it should be looked at holistically. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but you know. You only see it in certain places, um, and a big part of the reason is somebody who gets rich in a in the city. Just because I, I know Atlanta does does a higher population. Yeah. Um, and that's the the really hard part. There's a lot of like, there's a lot of speculation on why, but I, I think it's just with, like how you see most people are trapped in a, in a certain mindset. Like, a lot of people just are struggling. It's hard to get an opportunity. Like, most, some, a lot of people are just kind of come by things every day, but other people that are in those types of environments don't really get an opportunity unless it's, you know, for sports or if they do exceptionally well in academics. mindset issue and it's a you know it's a cultural thing to, I think like obviously Africans have a different mindset true like Africans that come from Africa have a different mindset versus African Americans that are here that you know have been kind of brought up from an early age to yeah well I mean it's already a cherry pick um, group Right. Over a hundred million people. And who comes here are the people who can get the visa. And <laughs> they're the people who are already outperforming in Nigeria. Right. Uh, they're doing amazingly well in school, and so they're able to get sponsored by their government to come go to school here. So it's a very big group already. Anyway, <laughs> like. Um, and so uh, it's also a mindset because. They are very focused on school, obviously, and um, so they're going to be able to get into the industry. But the, the learning aspect, rather than I need to make as much money and be uh, make the biggest consumer I can be. Yeah, I mean, they're very career oriented, according to what I would say. They're, they're focused on their career. Right. I've never met a Nigerian who is. <laughs> I mean, that guy I was telling you about earlier, who became an executive, he's not here. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, you're going to get Yeah, so, they're career focused. Now, um, they have a lot of
who's going to get hurt the most? It's people who don't have a generation. Um, yeah. So even if you're a Nigerian who's come here to become a doctor, if you got a mortgage on your house and all that, I mean, when the price of assets goes down, and you don't have anything paid off, you're, you're going to be hurt by that. So, I mean, the old money is still winning. The old money is still the safest money. Right? I mean, Which is part of the problem, as it is, just because no one that was here 100, 150 years ago would not have, would barely be getting established. No. How many people still going to be going on Sunday with us right along? Everybody? Or? Well, can you buy things on the list? Or only with one's pickup? Uh, we can only get what's on the list. So, make sure... Well, on the list or in, in pick, like... <laughs> No, on the list. Not, not necessarily. Okay. Yeah, we'll go and pick up stuff, but I'm sure that there'll be things that that we we won't, that they won't have for us to pick up. We'll have to get an alternative to that. But yeah, we marching with you by the list, so we no no extras on that. But if it's on the list, there's a pretty good chance we're gonna get it. Okay. I'll just add everything I need to the list. But I'm just asking for head count on who wants to go because I know, I know you do so. I mean, I'm going to the thrift store to try and find a bike. Yeah, we'll make a run to the thrift store if there's any other place that you need to go. Yeah. Yeah. And so we're going to St. Joseph. So you're going? Just for the right. Okay. You're right, yeah. And it's called Beltway 30. What's that? It's called Red 31. Oh, Belt Highway. No, it's, well, it might be 31. It's Belt Highway. 36 is the one that we take into town. And then we hit Belt Highway and we go to the left, goes towards Mark Menards. And, well, I think actually the left goes towards Walmart, too. But that's a long strip where most of the stores are. So anything along that strip. If I want to pick up something somewhere, then this will be the time to do it. What day are you doing? On Sunday. Yeah, yeah. post office. Yeah, post office. That's the only reason I can do it. I can go. I can just go. Okay. I mean, are you welcome to Just to like, home, just like for civilization. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. I just didn't, I just was thinking there's a limited number of seats and uh, it's a 15 passenger van, so okay. that's the reason why I was asking. I'll make sure that we've got this seat that we can go in there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there's right now there's seating for eight people. Well, I, probably yeah. there's yeah. six of me and my wife. Yeah, that's so yeah. We we got right. it right there. But we do have to pick up um, a couple of 16 foot long boards. It'll be our last stop at Menards coming back, and that door's gonna be open. Just